this is Dr. Clayton Lane. In this video, we'll be discussing injury prevention in adolescence. Well, first of all, let's talk about what the benefits of sports are. Um, it is very important for a norm, normal, healthy physical development of children. Um, we can also see sports as a model of life. It uh, allows children and participants to learn to work as a team as well as handle adversity and empathize with others who may not be performing at the same level and then also helps them establish a work ethic which will help them in life. But there is a downside. There's uh, many injuries in sports. Obviously here's a table from the year 2000 of the injuries sustained in sports. You can see that the first eight activities here uh, account for um, the majority of injuries in sports and that would be bicycle riding, basketball, football, roller sports, injuries on the playground, baseball and softball combined, soccer and trampolines. Well what are the most common causes of fatality in sports? Obviously that's the biggest issue we want to uh, focus on first. There's head injury, cardiac events, and heat illness. Now, adults are obviously prone to head injury as well, but children are more prone to it because they have a higher head to body weight ratio and weaker neck muscles and therefore less ability to control their head during sports. Cardiac events, there are certain conditions that only present with strenuous activity. So there may be a child with an undiagnosed cardiac condition and the first we know of it is when they undergo that first uh, competition and then obviously that's too late. Heat illness is uh, vastly uh, underappreciated uh, because it is a, uh, the number three cause of death in sports. Adults are prone to this as well, but then there's, in children, they have much less efficient thermoregulatory mechanisms, uh, lower sweat rate, and they acclimatize more slowly and therefore are more prone to heat illness. Well, how do we prevent head injuries? There's the obvious, which would be wear helmets during uh, many sports. And then um, we've recently come to be more aware of concussions, and we've even established rules about concussions. For example, an athlete cannot return to play in the same game if they have signs of a concussion here in Alabama. And then also they must be cleared by a medical professional before they do return to play. Prevention of cardiac events, that largely uh, comes at the pre-participation physical. This is a requirement in Alabama. Uh, we can pick up many other medical conditions, but the most important probably being the heart. Uh, if we pick up a murmur, then we can diagnose those uh, silent conditions prior to play and prevent a cardiac event. Prevention of heat illness, this is uh, of extreme importance here, particularly in South Alabama. The uh, steps that we can take to avoid it, heat illness, warm up appropriately that prevents injury but also allows the body to acclimatize. We can also monitor the humidity and heat index which are directly related to the level of stress on the body. Schedule the um, rest periods in the shade during practices. We can also properly hydrate prior to competition so as an athlete two hours prior to competition we should be drinking 16 to 20 ounces of water then 20 minutes before activity we should drink another 8 to 10 ounces of water. There should also be chilled fluids on the field during the practice and we should enforce periodic drinking throughout activity 8 to 10 ounces every 20 minutes and we found that sports drinks are better for hydration if the duration of the activity is greater than one hour. Also we should never fluid restrict. Uh, many coaches uh, can sometimes perceive discipline and toughness and associate that with restricting water and, and that's not acceptable and then there's other sports where there's weigh-ins such as wrestling where uh, weight loss could be important but fluid restriction should never be a part of that protocol. Then schedule practice in cool hours that's fairly obvious but uh, not always done and then if we have a problem uh, athlete with uh, hydration we may record their daily weights to measure hydration. Then we also need to know what the three stages of heat illness are so we can recognize them and treat them appropriately. Heat cramps is just painful muscle spasms. At that point the athlete should be encouraged to drink a cold sports drink and perform light stretches. Heat exhaustion is the next phase. In this phase the athlete begins profuse sweating. 
Uh, they may have pale skin and dizziness, nausea, or headaches. They should be immediately moved to the shade or an air-conditioned environment. They should lie down and elevate their legs and have cold towels and uh, cold drinks to help cool them. And then the last stage, the most uh, dangerous heat stroke. In this stage, the athlete presents with uh, some of the previous symptoms, but then also confusion, dry skin, a core temperature greater than 104, and sometimes seizures. At this point, the emergency medical services should be activated immediately and get an ambulance there for hospital transport and the athlete should be emerged in an ice bath. Every minute counts in this situation to prevent kidney failure, coma, and death. Now let's go through the specific sports, bicycling. Um, there's been good studies to show that there's increased risks with slippery services, low light such as twilight, city streets, and high speeds. So we're going to avoid those environments when we can. There's also been a proven decreased incidence in head injuries in states where helmets are required by law, so that gives us some efficacy of helmet use. What about basketball? ACL injuries are 10 times as common in basketball as compared to football, uh, despite what some people think. There is some evidence that neuromuscular training, such as in a sports performance facility, can be helpful for that. Additionally, ankle braces, mouth guards, and eye protection all have been shown to decrease injury rates in basketball. What about football? Neck injuries are very common. The things we can do to prevent neck injuries, proper tackling techniques, we basically teach the athlete to tackle with their face rather than the top of their head, which is uh, termed spearing. Will also prohibit play in an athlete if they have anatomic spinal stenosis, which would make them prone to spinal cord injury. We can also encourage neck strengthening. What this does is essentially allows the athlete's head to take on the mass of their whole body and uh, improves the kinetics whenever an impact is sustained. Another thing we know. Uh, from about football is that knee braces or the hinge knee braces for offensive linemen has been effective in uh, decreasing the incidence of MCL injury. So that's a good preventative measure. Also again with concussions we're not going to allow the athlete to return to play if they ha are showing symptoms of a concussion and that's because of the known second impact syndrome which can be fatal. It can cause uh, immediate sudden swelling of the brain if they sustain a second impact which can lead to death. Roller sports, the most common site of injury is the forearm and the wrist, therefore wrist braces and elbow pads are helpful. Obviously helmets were helpful in this sport as well. And then avoiding areas of motor vehicle traffic because the number one cause of injury in uh, roller sports as well as bicycles is uh, collision with a motor vehicle. On the playground, fractures are the most common. 75% of these are to the arm or hand. There's an increased incidence on non-protective surfaces. This is why you see a lot of wood chips and rubber mats in playgrounds these days. The most frequent cause of death on the playground is hanging. And to avoid this, we're going to avoid any loose clothing with uh, neck straps, ties, necklaces, etc. Also, kids will sometimes want to incorporate ropes into their play, and we're going to avoid that. Falls are the most common cause of death, and at home, tip over of equipment such as swings is the most common cause of death. So we want to avoid unstable playground equipment. Baseball and softball, one of the most common things we hear about is little leaguer shoulder and elbow. Essentially what that is is a growth plate injury. The best best way to think of this is that the growth plates are weaker than the ligaments and muscles in an adolescent so that if the joint is overcome by a stress it's not going to be the ligaments that give way or the muscles usually instead it's the growth plate that's injured and that growth plate can also be injured with minor repetitive stress and that's why we've uh, come to these prevention strategies such as pitch counts which are extremely important and at the top you see a chart here indicating the maximum number of pitches per game in the uh, each age group and then also I would note that if you do reach the maximum number of pitches they should rest for four days before pitching again limiting curves and sliders has also been shown to decrease elbow and shoulder injury in adolescent athletes more obvious 
uh, equipment measures for prevention, face guards on helmets are helpful, breakaway bases are helpful in preventing lower extremity injury, defibrillators on the field acquired in some areas and in some leagues and the reason is because of this very rare condition of commodio cordis and that's when an athlete sustains a blow to the sternum by a baseball and it causes the heart to go into fibrillation which can cause death the only thing that can reverse that is a defibrillator and it has to be used immediately obviously soccer believe it or not the most common injury is wrist and finger fractures of note however it also has the highest rate of ACL injury so that neuromuscular training that I mentioned earlier is going to be very important a good uh, study was done by Mandelbaum in which they randomized soccer players to a preventative neuromuscular training program and a non-preventative program and they did uh, see a lower incidence of ACL injuries with the, that program shin guards, padded goal posts, non-absorbent balls on uh, the wet field and proper cleats are also all effective in reducing soccer injuries as far as trampolines go the American Academy of Pediatrics basically has said no trampolines whatsoever in the home environment the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons is slightly less stringent uh, we've recommended having the jumping surface at a ground level and then making sure that all the support bars and surrounding landing surface are well padded and that there's parental supervision at all times. So in summary, education is the key to prevention of sports injuries. It's uh, up to the parent and the athlete to know the most common injuries in your sport as well as research the latest proven safety gear and strategies of prevention. Thank you.